Okay. You people might need pencil and ruler. The title of the chapter is General Wave Properties. And uh, this is a type of revision, not a notes making class like that, normal class. Now, general wave properties, it's a method of energy transfer. I will be putting some concepts and it will be a quick revision. So I will be asking some questions. I will be sharing some memory. And uh, definitely, it's not a, a case of writing the concepts. Now, I'm putting the first concept. Wave is a mode of energy transfer. So when I am talking to you people in a class, it's a mode of energy transfer because wave, sound wave I'm using. Now, wave is a mode of energy transfer. The fundamental concept of a wave is the mode of energy transfer. Waves do not transfer, they, waves do not transfer mass. Waves actually transfer energy. Waves are designed, look at this wave, the conventional water waves. Waves are designed to transfer energy. This is the fundamental classification of waves. There are two types of waves, mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. So my first question, what are mechanical waves? Waves that need a mind. You people can also answer on the chat. Huh. Go ahead, please. Uh, waves that need a medium to travel through? Yes. Uh, Mechanical waves are those which always need a, me a medium like water waves and uh, water waves are mechanical like sound waves are mechanical. Then what are electromagnetic waves? These are the waves which do not need any medium to travel. They uh, can travel on their own. Second classification, this is something to be remembered. Waves are classified in two broader branches, progressive waves and stationary waves. Progressive wave, one chapter goes on this and second chapter goes on this. These are the two chapters of our course. In the recent, in the recent past paper, both of these chapters are coming together like a club mixing. Progressive waves are further classified as transverse and longitudinal waves. So this is a this is a good memory call that how waves are classified. The wave, what are progressive waves? The waves which transfers energy away from the source. So when I speak in a class, the sound waves are progressive. They move forward. They do not come back. This is a progressive wave. 
progressive waves are those which transfer energy and the waves are able to move together. The waves are able to transfer energy away from the source. So these are the signals which take up the energy. These are the signals. Look at this loudspeaker. Look at this loudspeaker. This is a signal transmission. This is a transfer of energy. This is a transfer of energy. These are called these are called longitudinal waves. Sound waves are there. So what are progressive waves? The waves which transfer energy. The wave front move forward and transfers the energy forward. We used to represent continuous lines. We used to represent crest and trough. Uh, the difference, the separation between them is the wavelength. Crest is shown by a continuous line and the trough is shown by a dotted line. These are our wave fronts which are showing the progression of a wave. Now, there are two types of progressive waves, transverse and longitudinal. Definition of transverse very often come in the paper. Now, what is the definition for a transverse wave? Yes, please. What is the definition of transverse waves? So, a wave that uh, the particles oscillate perpendicularly. Perpendicularly. Okay, very good. But do not use the word particles because particle word will make a confusion because transverse waves are long, are electromagnetic also. So, you should use the word oscillations. Definition is right. The waves in which oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. This definition is important. It has appeared many times in the exam. Energy is traveling on x-axis and uh, particles are vibrating on y-axis. This is a transverse pulse. What happens in a wave? Every particle, every particle goes up and come down on its turn. Every particle goes up and turn down, turn back. Actually, every particle on its turn move up and come down. This is called a transverse wave. A transverse wave, the concept is very important to remember that every particle goes up and uh, when it has the turn, it comes back. So every particle becomes a crest and every particle becomes a trough. This is why when the wave is going upward, we show the oscillations downward. So we move forward to our next examples of transverse waves in water, waves in a rope, and all the electromagnetic waves. This is a point to remember. All electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature. All electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature. These are some important terms in transverse waves. Actually, this is the first half of the chapter. Displacement, distance, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, time period, and wave front, wave form, speed of a wave, and phase. You can look at the phase and phase difference. I have changed the color and I made it red because phase and phase difference is a very important topic. It's a very important topic. And uh, you should remember that examiner consider it a very important topic. So a good number of questions are on this topic.
Now, displacement. What is displacement? When a wave is moving, the, the, the separation of a particle from the mean position is called displacement. So when a wave is traveling, this is called the this is called the mean position. So suppose you take this separation, this is called displacement. So displacement is the separation from the mean position. It is the separation from the mean position. Now, we had a concept that waves are not very close, very visible, very grippable, very up in that sense. We need a mathematical model because it is always difficult to deal with waves rather than dealing with mechanics. So they, they put a model, they compared wave with sine theta and why they use sine theta because sine theta is a periodic function and wave is also a periodic function. So that is why wave uh, sine theta is used to represent a wave amplitude, which is also related to intensity. So when a wave travels, the height of a wave is the amplitude. When a wave travels, the height of a wave is the amplitude. And this is the this is a measure of intensity, energy transfer. So when you speak loud, when you speak loud, it is a measure of greater amplitude. A louder signal means a louder signal means greater amplitude. Look at this wave. So this is the amplitude. This is the amplitude. This is the amplitude. Amplitude is a measure of intensity. Intensity is the power dissipated per unit area. Look at the formulas. Intensity is power upon area. Intensity is energy upon area. So these are the two formulas for intensity. Intensity of a wave is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. Is chapter ka number two. Is chapter ka number two hai. Bohot martaba paper mein aa chuka hai ye concept. Ki intensity of a wave is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. Intensity is proportional to the square of amplitude. A is proportional, I is proportional to A square. I is equal to K A square. I1 upon I2 is equal to A1 upon A2 whole square. This formula is very important and you will find this formula repeatedly in the exam. And this is a very important topic. Then comes inverse square law. This is a rare topic. What is inverse square law? Intensity of a signal is inversely proportional to the square of the separation. So if you move away from a signal, for example, you move away from a microphone, your sound intensity decreases. I is proportional to 1 upon x square. So when you make it like this, you can, uh, you can get it. I, uh, I is equal to k upon x square. Intensity is proportional to 1 upon separation. And you can combine them. You can combine them. Combining the two results, you can get A1 upon A2 is equal to X2 upon X1. Now, this, uh, this, uh, this relation is actually combination of the two formulas. But this is a rare topic. Normally, this is not commonly in our requirement.
attenuation when a signal is traveling the signal gradually weaken what is attenuation when a signal is traveling suppose you are speaking with a crowd so as you move away from the source gradually the sound sound intensity decreases when you are away from uh, a, a wi-fi router the signal strength decreases so in well, the reason one why this happens that the intensity is proportional to the square of the separation. So signal gets weaker. Reason two, as a wave travels, it loses energy to the surrounding. When a wave travels, it loses energy to the surrounding. So amplitude, amplitude is decreasing. So gradual reduction in amplitude is called attenuation. Attenuation occurs due to spreading, due to energy loss to surrounding. For example, mobile companies put a tower. This tower signal gradually get weakened. <clears throat> so the mobile companies have to put a booster, regenerator, so that the signal strength can be regained. Then comes the title wavelength. Now I need the definition. This is my next question for today. What is the definition? What is the definition for wavelength? It's the separation between two successive troughs or crusts. Good. Uh, now, what do you think, Zen? What is the definition? Uh, sir, wavelength is the distance between two consecutive waves or it is the separation between consecutive trough or two consecutive crests. But do you remember there was an official definition also? It is the separation between two points on a wave which are exactly in phase. Yes, key, this is the A level definition. Time period, it is the time for one complete cycle. It is the time for one cycle of a wave. What is frequency? It is the number of complete cycles per unit time. Number of cycles in a given one second. F is equal to one upon T and frequency is measured in Hertz. Why frequency is important? It is the identification of a signal. It is the identification of a signal, speed of a wave. Speed of a wave has a formula. V is equal to F lambda. This formula is important and it comes nearly in every second paper. It is there and we have a V is equal to F lambda is a basic formula to remember. Now look at the derivation. V is equal to D upon T for one cycle of a wave. D is equal to lambda. For one cycle of a wave, the distance is wavelength and the time is time period. And we put it like this here. So if we put it, we get the formula V is equal to F lambda. This is the derivation. This is the derivation for this is the This is the derivation for the formula. Now we have these type of examples which we used to discuss in our regular classes. Presently, uh, we are doing this revision and the purpose is to revise the theory of the topic and uh, definitely uh, waves is uh, not a difficult topic except polarization. And I had taken a separate class on polarization. 
that was dedicated to polarization because polarization is a bigger topic. Now, wave front. What is wave front? Wave front is defined as the as a surface which travels with the wave and containing particles exactly in phase. This is these curves. These curves are called wave fronts. These curves are called wave front. These are the circles. These are straight lines. So we draw these lines which we show wave fronts and the dotted lines are there which we call trough. So we come to our next title, phase. Phase is a very important topic of this chapter. What is the definition of phase? What is the definition of phase? Phase is a basically an angle. Phase is an angle which is used to represent a wave. The idea is very simple. The idea says that a wave cannot be idealized, cannot be visualized in a normal wave. So what we do, we compare every wave we compare every wave with a sine theta curve. We compare every wave with a sine theta curve. And this comparison is called phase. One cycle, one lambda corresponds to 360 degree to pi radian. A very, very important box of this chapter. One lambda, one cycle always corresponds to a phase difference of 360 degree. So what is phase? Phase is actually an angle. Phase is an angle which is used to represent a wave, which is used to represent a wave, and it is only a symbolic representation. Look at this screen. This is a time period because x-axis is time. So this time the 2 pi radian is coming up. The 2 pi radian is balancing with capital T and one time period is equal to 2 pi radian. Phase difference. The symbol is the same. Phase difference is the same symbol, uh, but the concept is slightly different like voltage, like potential and uh, uh, potential difference in the chapter of electricity. Uh, precisely there is a difference and the two quantities are the two quantities are different because one is a single value and the second is a difference of two values now the symbol is the same the symbol is the same phase difference what is phase difference it is it is the angle by which two signals are two signals are out of a step or out of range. So one signal is ahead, second signal is at following it. So the angle difference is called phase difference. For example, when two waves are moving in synchrony with each other, we call it exactly in phase. When two waves are moving uh, side by side, this is called exactly in phase. When two waves are moving such that the trough one wave trough matches with the crest of the other wave, it is called exactly out of phase. Look at this screen.
the third one the waves are moving together the waves are moving side by side and there is a constant phase difference the two waves are moving together and they are moving side by side this is a constant phase difference case change of phase and amplitude now phase comes for angle amplitude is a connection of intensity these two are very important parameters and you will find questions related to change of phase related to amplitude so this is a common practice that examiner changes them and asks you to draw the graph again now look at this example the example is there whenever you are going to solve such a question remember to count division to shift angle use formula to change amplitude look at this screen Look at this screen. I have transformed it 30 degree. The, the, you have to count the division in the paper. So the example is there. I have transferred it 30 degree. It's a transformation of 30 degree pi by 6 radian. Now, different questions like this is a transformation of 90 degree in comes in the middle. And now example 3, double the intensity and phase no change. If you want to see this example, you have to use a pencil and ruler. This is original sketch. Now, you, the examiner wants you to double the intensity and double the intensity and phase no change. So how you will draw it? So if you double the intensity, normally mistake happens. The people think that amplitude will be double. No. You have to use a mathematical working. Look at this mathematical working. And you will find that the new amplitude is 1.4a. It is not double. And then you will plot 1.4a. There is no change in the angle. There is no change in the angle. So you will keep the graph in synchrony with uh, the previous angle but you have to increase the amplitude. Look at this graph carefully. And if you have any query, you can ask me. Now, example four, 
डबल द इंटेंसिटी एंड फेज आउट बाय थर्टी डिग्री दिस इज अ वेरी ट्रिकी वन बट एक्चुअल इन द एग्जाम पेपर एग्जामिनर विल बी गिविंग यू द क्वेश्चन ऑन अ ग्राफ ग्रिड so counting the division will be possible so let's try this question with me copy this question copy this question and you have to double the intensity and you have to phase out by 30 degree you have to see this so now let's work it out here because uh, already we have to discuss that 1.1 1.4 a 1.4 a as i mentioned doubling the ampli doubling the intensity does not mean doubling the amplitude because it's a square ratio under root comes now pi by 6 means you have to shift the angle you have to shift the shift the graph 30 degree in the paper you have to count the boxes 180 degree how many boxes for 180 degree then using ratio to count the boxes for 30 degree uh please look at the graph if you have drawn the graph compare your results and give me the feedback Mine is similar. Okay. Zain, could you draw the graph? I uh, know I joined a bit late. The graph went together, but I was kind of shining it side to side. phase and phase difference the second approach
second approach is talking about a single wave. There are two points on a wave P and Q, and we want to find the <clears throat> we want to find the difference between the two waves. We want to find the difference between the two waves, and uh, this is where this is a single wave actually. This is a single wave, and we want to differentiate the we want to differentiate between two points. So what we do, we first check how much is one lambda, one lambda, number of division for one lambda. Then we measure the divisions between P and Q, that is X. We apply the ratio method. We apply the ratio method to find, for example, lambda is 10 and PQ is four. So if you want to find PQ, then you can you can use a ratio method to find the phase difference. So whenever we are comparing with two points, when you are comparing with two points, you can apply the same ratio method. One lambda corresponds to a phase difference of two pi radians. When we are comparing a phase difference, there are some conditions to note that when you want to compare the phase difference, the wave should be moving in the same medium. They should be moving in the same speed. Same type of waves should be compared and same individual lambda. It means you should, you should not compare waves if they are of different nature. For example, gamma rays should not be compared. Gamma rays should not be compared with, uh, suppose, infrared rays. So if you want to compare signals, they should be of the same nature. Now, this is a pure mathematical topic, the waves. So we always advise students to remember these shapes. Y is equal to sine theta, Y is equal to cos theta, and Y is equal to minus sine theta. Now, if we draw waves on a time axis, if we draw waves on a time axis, the lagging wave is the one which is apparently ahead. And the wave which is apparently backward, it is actually the leading wave. It is opposite in sense. Now, when we have a string and we vibrate the string, the pulse travels on the wave apparently and it rebounds and come back. Water waves are one of the best examples of a transverse waves. The water waves can form different shapes, different presentation. The best apparatus to demonstrate water waves is the ripple tank. We have a dipper, we have a lamp, and we have a white paper under it. And there is a tank of which we contain water. The dipper is run by a signal generator and the dipper moves up and down. And in this way, the waves are capable of producing a visible image on the screen. Look at the screen. Look at the screen, which is uh, there. And the waves are traveling on the in the water tub. But you can see the shadow image on the white screen. Now we come to longitudinal waves. I put my next question for today. What are longitudinal waves? Now, then you have to tell what are longitudinal waves. Sorry, sir, I have to find this. Definition, what are longitudinal waves? Uh, sir. Longitudinal waves are when the uh, particle, sorry, uh, the uh, vibration or the oscillations are parallel to the direction of the wave, not perpendicular, right, transverse. Right. The, a wave in which oscillations are parallel to the direction of the wave. The waves are traveling. The waves are traveling parallel to the wave. When the particles are moving towards each other, it is a compression. And when the waves are traveling away from each other, it is a rare fraction. Examples of longitudinal waves, sound waves, shock waves, waves in a spring, these are called the longitudinal waves. The, the compression and rare fraction are the two important factors, compression and rare fraction. 
So when a transverse wave is traveling, the displacement versus time, look at the position here. This is the center of rarefaction. The displacement is zero. And this is the center of this is the center of compression. The displacement is zero. Now, this is the point where the compression is converting into rarefaction. So here, the amplitude is maximum. Another, this is the graphical representation for a longitudinal wave. Then we also use uh, pressure signals. The pressure is alternating because compression means region of high pressure and rarefaction means region of low pressure. So pressure is changing with time. Sound waves. Sound waves are those waves, longitudinal waves, which are produced by vibration of a source. This is a sequence of compression and rarefaction. Audible frequency range. This now I put my next question because it is very famous. What is the audible frequency range? Anyone please tell what is the audible frequency range? So what is the audible frequency range? No, no, 10 to 20,000 can't be. Audible for humans, now. The audible frequency range is 20 to 20,000 hertz. Determination of frequency of sound by a CRO. It's a very famous, very simple method. This is a sound, this is a CRO. You need to calibrate it. You could have to put a microphone, a loudspeaker, a signal generator. You have to put this apparatus for our working. Now, this is the output of a CRO. This is for amplitude, this is for time period. Now, what is the idea that these are the signals on a screen? So you have to translate them. You can count the boxes one, two, three, four. There are four boxes for time period. So you will multiply two by four. So you get eight millisecond as time period. For frequency, you will do one upon eight into 10 to the power minus three for second conversion. So you get the frequency. Similarly, when you count the vertical boxes and you find 2 and you see the y-axis, so you will say 2 into 5, 10 millivolt. This is how we can use a CRO for the 
uh, for the calculation. Now, let's have a comparison between longitudinal and transverse. Remember that longitudinal waves have energy transfer parallel to their own motion and transverse waves have a transverse wave have energy transfer perpendicular to their motion. Now, this is a very good animation to compare between transverse and longitudinal wave. Polarization of waves. This topic was uh, not in our course from 2016 to 2022. Then they got it back in 2022. So this topic had a this topic had a like a history. This topic was in our course before 2016. Then it was removed. Then it got back. But when it came back, it got a bit bigger. Uh, the concept comes here that what is polarization? If we start our discussion, we have to first make a concept that when waves emerge from a source by nature, they spread out in all possible directions. If you restrict a wave to one plane, if you restrict the oscillations of a wave, it is called polarization. So what is the concept of polarization? If you stop a wave from spreading out, you call it polarization. So what is polarization? Polarization is actually restriction in a wave. We want to, we want to stop a wave from spreading out. Now, I am in recalling Melissa's law. It is used to calculate the intensity of a plane polarized electromagnetic wave after the transmission through a polarizing fit filter or a series of polarizing filters. Melissa's law states that the intensity of plane polarized light that passes through an analyzer varies as the square of the cosine of the angle 
between the plane of the polarizer and the transmission axis of the analyzer. I is equal to I naught cos square theta. This is the formula. So look at the statement and uh, this formula is important. As mentioned, I had separately did a class, dedicated class on polarization and uh, <clears throat> polarization should be studied separately because it's a difficult topic. It is not coming every year, but as it is a new topic, it can cause problem. These are some basic mathematics things for those, uh, obviously everyone doesn't take maths. So these are some helpful boxes to remember and how to deal with this function. Calculator should be in degree mode. Table of transmission depending on polari polarizer orientation. When the transmission axis is vertical, cos square theta will be one and transmitted intensity will be I naught maximum. But when the transmission axis sw uh, swings and it is horizontal, it will stop the signal and the out outer signal is zero. Methods of polarization. This is the most common method. Use a polaroid. Use a polaroid to stop the extra oscillations. And this is the second method, reflection. Like the sunglasses are used, sunglasses use reflection to polarize a signal. Unpolarized light strike a surface and rebound completely polarized light. It is a reflection case. completely polarized light. So look at the screen, 10 theta is N2 upon N1, polarization by reflection and refraction. So there are two methods, either use a polaroid or use the concept of partial, use the concept of partial reflection and refraction. The good example is the sunglasses which are able to polarize the incident light in this way. So if you are using a polarized function, you can capture a better picture, more color, more transition. This is how we deal with this. Now I move to the next topic of this chapter. This, this is also, this is a rare topic in a way that it doesn't come every year. Electromagnetic waves. What are electromagnetic waves? The waves which can travel through space and they do not require any medium, this is called an electromagnetic wave. Look at this, there are two signals in it. An electromagnetic wave actually consists of two signals which are mutually perpendicular. They are fused signals, they are perpendicular to each other. This is an electric signal and there is a magnetic signal. So actually, uh, when an electromagnetic wave travels, when an electromagnetic wave travels, look at this electromagnetic signal.
This is called an electromagnetic signal. An electromagnetic signal. An electromagnetic signal is actually a combination of two signals. Now, important properties of electromagnetic waves. All the EM waves are transverse waves. They all travel at the same speed, that is the speed of light, and they all can travel through the vacuum. These are important properties. Now, relation between frequency and wavelength. V is equal to F lambda. So, C will be, if we take it C as the speed of light, we can get a relation here that frequency, that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. Frequency and wavelength are frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. This is the sketch. This is a relation between now electromagnetic waves spectrum. This is something to learn and it comes in the paper. We start with gamma rays, then X-rays, then ultraviolet, waveguide, infrared, micro, and radio. From left to right, wavelength increases and frequency decreases. This is a table and I had posted it and I will post inshallah again that everyone has to learn these values for all the EM waves. Either you learn the wavelength or you learn the frequency, at least one of them. Now, this is to learn specially that visible light has a wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometer. These are the visible light and wavelength range. Uses of electromagnetic waves. These are the some uses. Radio waves are used in radio and television communication. Microwaves are used in satellite television. Uh, infrared, household electrical appliances, television controllers, and intruder alarms. Light, visible light is used in optic fiber for medical and telephone. Ultraviolets are used for sunbeds, fluorescent tubes, and sterilization. X-rays are used in hospitals and for engineering for checking cracks in structures. Gamma rays are used for sterilization, medical treatment, killing germs, and also like X-rays. Now we come to our we come to our next title, which is the last in official way of this big chapter. The title is Doppler effect. This topic was introduced in 2016 and uh, it is also considered to be a bit difficult topic. Now, I this is my next question. What is Doppler effect? Is it the change in frequency when a source is moving away or towards an object? Good. An uh, Doppler effect, it is uh, an apparent change in frequency of a wave for an observer moving relative to its source. The Doppler effect is observed whenever the source of wave is moving with respect to an observer. So it is an apparent change it is the it is an apparent change in the frequency of a signal like you are standing and a police car is approaching you 
so when the car is clo getting closer so this guy will feel will feel high frequency and this one will actually feel a low frequency so this is an apparent change the doppler effect is an apparent change in frequency doppler effect is an apparent change in frequency when a signal source is moving is observed with all waves including sound and light in 2020-22 they remove light from the discussion and only sound is left now now this is the formula for the observed frequency when a source of sound waves move relative to a stationary observer following formula is used this formula has these parameters frequency observed frequency of the source velocity of sound speed of sound means or vs speed of source now this formula can be written in two possible ways fsv upon v minus vs and fsv upon v plus vs when the source is moving towards the observer the frequency apparent frequency decreases when the source is moving towards the observer the observed frequency the observed frequency when it is moving towards the observer the apparent frequency increases and when it is moving away from the observer the observed frequency decreases so this is the formula to remember so please copy down the formula only the formula and we want i want to do a question here
solve this equation, solve this question and let me know the answer. Two seven seven nine. It's a seven seven nine. Then tomare pass ki answers, but answers you are getting. Look at the answers. One answer is coming 1010 and second answer is coming 780. So we completed this chapter and uh, uh, I'm starting some questions. You people have to bring your past paper books. <coughs>
June 18, 23, 5, state the relation between the intensity and the amplitude of a wave. I is proportional to A square. I1 upon I2 is equal to A1 upon A2 whole square. Microwaves of the same amplitude and wavelength are emitted in phase from two sources P and Q. The sources are arranged as shown. A microwave detector is moved along a path that is parallel to the line joining P and Q. Joining P and Q. Okay, this is not part of this first chapter. Actually, it looks that uh, I feel this is coming from the superposition chapter. Uh, let's do the next question because this question... Um, This question is more on superposition. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. This is uh, November 18, 224. November 18, 224. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. By reference to the direction of propagation of energy, state what is meant by a longitudinal wave. A wave in which oscillations are parallel to the wave.
a stationary sound wave in air has amplitude a in an experiment a detector is used to determine a square and the variation of a square with distance x along the wave is shown a square and x state the phase difference between the vibration of an air particle at x is equal to 25 and the vibration of air particle at 50. So first we locate 25 and then we locate 50. Now look at the position. They are exactly in the same position. Both are supposed to be troughs. Bo sorry, both are supposed to be crest. So now suggest an answer here. Will it be 180? Ah, answer is 180, but how it is 180? The answer is right. Ah, 180 is right, Zen, but uh, how it is 180? Because if we draw a virtual axis on the cycle here, Why it is not 360? Because it's not one complete cycle. Ah, but one complete cycle, one lambda corresponds to a phase difference of 2 pi radians. If it is one complete cycle, then it should be uh, then it should be uh, 360 degree actually. Theory questions should always be judged from whenever you get a confusion, you should always see the examiner reports and they're very helpful. Only a small minority, look at this.
only a small minority of the candidate able to deduce from the graph that the two air particles are at adjacent NT nodes so that the phase difference between their vibration was 180. The most common incorrect answer was 360 as we were discussing. If it is one complete cycle, if it is one complete cycle, it would be 360. But answer is 180. Now, how answer is 180, how we know it's a case of a stationary wave. A stationary sound wave, examiner says in the question, this is a stationary sound wave. Now it's a stationary sound wave. Now the amplitude is maximum. Maximum amplitude occurs at NT node. Even though this is not part of that chapter, but this happens in this chapter, that questions comes in mix. Separation between two successive anti nodes is always 180 degree. The speed of the sound in the air is 330. Determine the frequency of the sound. So, uh, I have a formula. V is equal to F lambda. I know the formula, but how I, I have the velocity. Uh, I need to find frequency. How I can get wavelength? How I can get the wavelength? How much would be the wavelength? Three sixty degree corresponds to lambda. I have a one eighty degree separation, so that will be lambda by two. From the graph, anti node to anti node is twenty five centimeter separation. Hmm, 660s and your feedback is not coming. Are you awakened? Determine the ratio amplitude of wave at 20 upon amplitude of wave at 25. 
So now you have to find the ratio. Let's read the graph from 20 and 25. 25, if I read from 25, it is coming 4. A square. And uh, what is that? Read from 20 also. It will be 2.6. Okay. Let's read from 20 and... Two point six or four, twenty five four and twenty two point six. A square uh, is four. X is equal to twenty five, and when X is equal to twenty. A square is equal to 2.6. Hello? Hello? Hello, Sam? G, sorry? जी जी बस हम मैं बस पांच मिनट लगेंगे मुझे ना मैं रास्ते में हूँ पांच मिनट लगेंगे बस मैं रास्ते में हूँ हेलो So, sorry for interference. Uh, A square is 2.6. So, you have to put these values. But this is a square value. Uh, but you are supposed to remove the square also no? because he wants A. Twenty should come on the top, so I'm taking the under root. Point eight one, okay. Now this is all why in every nearly every question they are getting to stationary wave. This happens actually in the real paper also because uh, stationary wave is a sister topic which comes everywhere.
it's happening in every question so why don't we do that question left there because when they are giving every question in the new papers like that so we can do this question let's open this question june 18 Microwaves of the same amplitude and wavelength are emitted in phase from two sources P and Q. The two sources are arranged as shown. Path of detector. The microwave detector is The microwave detector is moved along a path. This is parallel to the line joining P and Q. Okay, the dotted line is there, path of the detector. The detector is moving on this dotted line. A series of intensity maxima and intensity minima are detected. When the detector is at a point X, the distance Px is 1.840 and the distance Qx is 2.020. The microwaves have a wavelength of 6 cm. Calculate the frequency of the microwave. Describe and explain the intensity of the microwave detected at X. First, you say, let me know what answer you are getting on this working. So, why is it 8 times 10 to the power minus 2? Isn't it supposed to be 6? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. It's 6. You're right. Perfect. It is not 8. It is 6. So, it will be 5 times 10 to the power 9. 25. No, 5. Okay. Zen could have given in the scientific notation why so many zeros. 10 power 9. Describe and explain the intensity of the microwaves detected at X. So first we should calculate the part difference. Uh, Now we have uh, Px is 1.8 and Qx is 2.02. To subtract them, two point zero two.
minus 1.84. It will be 0.18. Sorry? 0 0.18. 0 0.18 and the wavelength is 6 centimeter. So 0. Point So look how many wavelengths come in between. Three. Hmm. It means it is three lambda. N lambda means Constructive interference. So it means Describe the effect on the interference pattern along the path of the detector due to each of the following separate changes. The wavelength of the microwave decreases. So when you decrease the wavelength, what will happen to that? The formula was x is equal to lambda d upon a. It is a double slit experiment. The phase difference between the microwave emitted from the source changes to 180. So it means 180 means phase out. the case of out of phase. So when you reverse it out of phase, what will happen? The maxima will become minima and minima will become maxima. So we keep it up to here and uh, we will inshallah continue this in our next class. Allah Hafiz.